Hey guys, on today's video I'm going to show you how to get your filament sensor working on an Ender 3 V2 running mainsail clipper. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and uh, leave some comments. I love the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I can. All right, let's uh, jump onto the computer and I'll show you what you got to do to get this thing working. All right, guys, so in this section, I'm going to show you where you can make the connections for the filament sensor. If you've got an Ender 3 V2, it's going to come with a 4.2.2 motherboard, which looks identical to this one. This particular one is a 4.2.7, but the filament runout sensor port and the pins is the same. So you can follow this either for the 4.2.7 or the 4.2.2 board. The pin that we need is PA4, so that's the pin number that we're going to need to uh, enter into our printer.config in mainsail OS. And I'll show you in case you guys have a different control board and you're trying to figure out what the runout sensor pin is, I'm going to show you where I got uh, the information from. So if you download a firmware for uh, any printer that you happen to have, so in this case, I'm going to go over here to my gyres. So I'm going to use the gyres firmware to get the information. You can click on it, and in the gyres uh, list of folders that's in here, there's a Marlin folder. You're going to double-click the Marlin folder, and you're going to go here to where it says Source. So double-click Source, and there's going to be a folder that says Pins. So Marlin, this particular uh, Marlin version is for the 4.2.2 motherboard. So these pin assignments are for the 4.2.2. If you had a different printer, let's say a CR10S Pro V2 or just a standard Ender 3, then you would download a firmware from some firmware creator and then go into the Marlin folder to get your specific pins. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, double click pins, and in here, the controller that we have on the 4.2.2 motherboard for the Ender 3 V2 is this STM32F1. So just double click that and then you're going to scroll and you're going to find your board. So apparently this controller is used on several boards. So if your board is one of these listed in here, uh, you can find your particular pin using the information in this folder. So I'm going to go down here. And uh, so what they've done here is the pins, Creality version 4.H, that includes all the pins for the base 4 point series of controller boards. If you have a 4.2.7, then there's a supplementary uh, pin information here. So for example, if you have a 4.2.7, you would open this one, look at the particular pins that you're looking for. But if there are pins that are missing, that aren't listed here, they would be listed in this version 4.h version. So I'm going to click on this one because we got a 4.2.2 board. And uh, if you double click it, you'll get this uh, Visual Studio page. But if you don't have Visual Studio loaded on your computer, there's another way you can do it. You can just right click on it and you can uh, edit it with Notepad++. Now you will need to download Notepad++, but it's pretty easy. So once you uh, open it up, you'll see here that you got a, uh, a list of information and what you're going to look for is the filament runout sensor. So right here, here's filament runout sensor. And you can see that it gives us a pin PA4. So this is the relevant information that you're looking for, okay? Next thing that we need to do is we need to get the printer config info that we need to insert into the printer config file. And to do that, we're going to use uh, this little... Uh, file here and I'll link all this stuff in the in the video description that way you guys don't have to jot any of this down you can just copy and paste it now the original creator that gave me this that I got this information from here his YouTube channel is called Hypermakes and he has a, a tutorial on this for the Ender 3 V2 uh, using Clipper now I modified his original uh, G code because it did not work the way that he had it on uh, my my setup, and this is what I this is what I changed here. So these these are the lines that we're going to insert. So we're just going to grab uh, all of these lines here, 
copy it, and then we're going to go to our mainsail OS clipper session, or if you're running fluid, it would be the same thing. Uh, it would just look a little different. You're going to click on the little wrench here where it says machine on the left, and then we're going to scroll down to our printer.config file. So in here, we're going to uh, find a spot to insert this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it under the bed mesh. So I'm just going to click over here on the zero, enter a couple of times, and then I'm going to paste that information that I got from the text file. And again, I'll link it in the video description. That way you guys don't have to worry about uh, jotting any of this information down. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, save it. But before I restart it, I'm going to show you what the uh, the, the current uh, desk dash looks like. So I'm just going to save this and close it, but I'm not going to restart. And I'm going to go to the dashboard. So in the dashboard, under uh, speed here, you got uh, speed. It shows you 100%. You got extruder. And under miscellaneous, if you go all the way down here to the bottom, you got miscellaneous. And it, all it shows you is fan control. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and restart the firmware, and I'm going to show you what that information that we loaded into the printer config file does for us. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention here before I do that. Uh, special thanks to Doug O'Connor for coming up with the uh, this uh, pause G-code command here. So you can see we got a G4 that's right after the insert code. Uh, it says G4P10,000. This is going to give us a 10 second pause. So this 10,000 is 10,000 milliseconds. 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us time after we trigger the runout sensor. Uh, when we load the, the new filament in, this will give us time after we trigger it to, to then fish the filament into the uh, extruder gears. So 10 seconds is plenty of time. Another thing too here that you can change is the uh, retraction length. All right guys, so this, this part here tripped me up pretty good uh, when I was working with this. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of it. So right here where you're, where, uh, okay, so you got the filament switch sensor action, right? So this is a, like a macro that runs whenever the filament sensor is triggered. The pause on runout being true means that this switch sensor filament macro will run. And then uh, the following thing is the runout G code. So once it's triggered, it's going to run these sequence of G code. But here's the part that really messed me up. So on the, the G1 here where it says extrude negative 450, this is a, essentially a, a retraction. So it's going to retract 450 millimeters of filament. Uh, when you first try to do this, like if you just insert this into your current printer config and you don't make this uh, next change, it's going to give you an error. And this messed me up for the longest time. I couldn't figure out why it was giving me this error, but this is what you have to do. So uh, come down here to where it talks about the extruder. And right here, this max extrude only distance has to be set to a, a number that is at least double of your retraction distance needed to unload the filament. So in my case, it's 450 millimeters of filament is needed to retract the filament that's in the Bowden tube once the filament sensor is triggered. So I have my value set at 900. If you got a longer Bowden tube, like let's say on a CR-10S Pro V2, and it's something like, I don't know, 600 uh, millimeters of filament, then your number is going to have to be like 1,200 here. That will give you enough uh, filament uh, headroom to unload and load the filament and for some reason uh, clipper is this way it needs to have like both those numbers added together and then whatever that value needs to be is what you put here uh, but anyway this this will save you some grief and headache because I was banging my head on the against the, the the table on this for a while but anyway that that's what solves that problem all right let's uh, get back to the rest of the process and then after that, it's going, you got the insert code. So the first thing that happens after you insert the filament into the filament sensor is it's going to pause for 10 seconds. That's going to give you some time. 
and then it's going to extrude a little bit of filament. Now I'm not sure why Clipper uh, uses these these uh, these numbers here. Uh, I would have thought that you would have wanted to extrude at least the 450 that you retracted or more to get the filament loaded. But uh, if you try to set this value at E450 or greater, you're going to extrude a ton of filament. So way more filament than we need. Uh, I'm not sure why this is. If somebody has that answer, please let me know in the comments. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's that for it. So let's go ahead and save and restart. And then we're going to go to the dashboard. And now when we go down to miscellaneous, now we have a an extra field here that says filament runout sensor, and it's detecting that there's filament in it because I do have a little piece of filament stuck in there. And you can turn this off or you can turn it on. If you have filament loaded in your filament runout sensor and uh, for some reason it's showing that it's empty, it's possible that it may need the pull-up value. So I'm going to show you how to set that. So you go over here to, you go back to machine, go back to your printer.config, and uh, down here in the filament switch sensor field, you're going to see this switch pin, and it's switch pin PA4. Uh, if you need the high pull-up, what you're going to do is you're going to in insert a exclamation point. So this right here will tell it that you need the high pull-up. And uh, once you do that, then you should get a uh, the filament detected, provided that you have filament in your filament sensor. All right, in my case, I don't have a resistor in uh, my configuration, so I'm going to leave that exclamation point off. And now let's jump back to the printer and we'll uh, test the print piece. So I'm starting a print, and this is a quick print. It's just a little calibration uh, square. And let me show you the filament sensor that I'm currently using. I'll include this uh, little STL file in the video description, but it's just a little simple filament sensor that uses a, a roller switch and a, a little JST connector. And I got another video on how to wire it to the motherboard. Uh, I'll leave that linked in the description. That way you guys can check that one out. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and interrupt the uh, process here by removing that piece of filament and triggering the sensor. And then the printhead is going to move over to the side and park. And then it's going to start to retract the filament that's inside the Bowden tube. You see it coming out there, and I'm having to coil it back on the spool. And like I said previously, it's about 450 millimeters of filament for an Ender 3 V2. If you have a printer that has a longer Bowden tube, you can always edit that printer config uh, retraction distance to a greater number. Uh, once the filament is fully retracted, you just got to make sure that you uh, get everything out of the... Uh, out of the extruder and using your uh, cutters that came with your printer give it a nice clean cut I like to cut it at an angle and then I go back and cut off that uh, that, that little uh, sharp tip to make it kind of like a spear shape and that uh, makes sure that it doesn't get hung up when it's being uh, fed back into the tube so now I'm just gonna insert it in the filament sensor and like I said before as soon as I trigger the filament sensor, 10 seconds is going to start. So it's going to pause for 10 seconds. Gives me time to load it inside the uh, extruder gears. And then you see the, the little wheel moving on the extruder. That means it's starting to extrude the filament. And now this step is very important. Uh, while it's doing this, 
what you want to do is on your clipper display or if you're using a cell phone like I am here you want to make sure that you resume the print and it's not going to resume right away until it finishes the extrusion uh, action but I'm going to go ahead and, and do that and the reason you want to do this is immediately after it uh, loads all the filament it's going to start the uh, it's going to con continue the print if you don't do this now and uh, you forget about it uh, once it loads the filament it's just going to sit there and drip filament out of the print nozzle uh, creating a, a gap between the the filament that's inside the nozzle and uh, what's going to be deposited on your print so I'm going to go ahead and turn the print to the side here so you guys can see a little bit better and there it goes so it's extruding the filament and since I already pressed resume as soon as it finishes that action it's going to resume printing on the part that uh, you were printing previously alright guys there it is completed print and let me turn the printer to the side and give you a more detailed view of the filament sensor and I'll zoom you guys in here real close so you can see so this is a little part that I designed in on shape and I'll include it in the video description but it's got a snap-on lid so you don't need any screws or anything and it's super simple all it is a little roller switch and a JST connector and just solder the pins up according to the diagram guys if you're new to the channel consider subscribing turn on your notification bell and leave me some comments I love the comments do my best to answer as soon as I see it and here's our uh, film and run out sensor on our display all right guys to the next video thanks for watching